During Nepal's armed conflict between government and Maoist forces, women and girls throughout the country endured severe hardship, as they do in all wars. Thousands of mothers struggled to provide for their families after their husbands were killed or fled the fighting. Some young women were forced into service, leaving emotional scars long after the fighting stopped. Many others were subjected to brutality, including sexual violence. Perpetrators were rarely brought to justice. The 2006 peace accord ended the decade-long war, but not the suffering. Subsequent political violence left more women on their own. Compensation for those who survived trauma was too little and too brief. There has been progress in countering the discrimination Nepali women have traditionally faced. One third of the seats in the constituent assembly and in local peace committees are reserved for females. Human rights groups have educated many women about the new laws ensuring their citizenship and inheritance rights. Rape is now a criminal offense against the state. But gender inequality is persistent. Women still suffer from widespread sexual violence in a climate of insecurity and impunity. Nepal is not unique. The United Nations Security Council in resolutions 1325 and 1820 recognize that women and girls need protection and support during all conflicts. The council also called for women's full participation in peace building. In 2010, a national action plan to implement these important UN resolutions was developed with support from donors and UN organizations and in coordination with women's organizations. The Royal Norwegian Embassy chaired the Peace Support Working Group and UNFPA, the UN Population Fund, co-chaired. Consultations on the plan were held in districts around the country with participation from all political parties, government officials including from the security sector, NGOs and conflict-affected women and girls. The main purpose of the National Action Plan is to uh, give uh, justice and uh, reparation uh, to the conflict-affected women and the child, the girl child, I mean. Uh, the reparation, justice to the victims and empowerment of the women and uh, involvement of the women in the uh, um, executive level and the meaningful participation in the governance system. The plan outlines measures to promote greater participation by women in Nepal's peace process supported by steps to raise public awareness on gender equality. It recognizes the need to provide support and services, including health care, to those who have been disadvantaged by the conflict. And it calls for training for officials and police in addressing sexual violence. There is also a commitment to meet the special needs of females who fought in the conflict. Former combatants who were recruited as child soldiers were discharged in 2010. To help them reintegrate in society, the UN provided counseling and job skills training. Activists who helped draft the action plan are hopeful that it will give women a stronger voice in Nepal's reconstruction and, above all, will make a real difference in the lives of those most affected by the conflict, women who, up to now, have not gotten the support they urgently need. Basically, they all all of them have a, just one concern. At least they should get some security. They should get some immediate services, and they should get some opportunity. You know, so that they can again rebuild their life uh, in their community. That is the one concern that everybody have. <laughs>